The advice and opinions expressed by the host of Autism Live and her guests are meant solely as suggestion and should not be in any way construed as child-specific advice. Any choices you make in determining your child's treatment are completely at your own discretion. Good morning and welcome to Autism Live. I just, I get so enthralled with that opening. I love it so much and it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna run parallel to what we're gonna be talking about today with our wonderful guests today. So uh, absolutely adore that opening. And what I'm talking to is that that opening was conceived, designed, executed all by artists that are affiliated with Spectrum Laboratory. And we have, good morning, Ka. We, later on in the show, we have joining us the two gentlemen who are the founders of uh, Spectrum Laboratories. They're incredible. They're just two incredible artists. We were just ooing and eyeing over their headshots because they have the best headshots ever because it shows these two amazing men and you can see the joy in their faces, in their headshots. We'll, we'll talk about that later on. Uh, but uh, thrilled that they're gonna be joining us and talking about what kinds of programs that they do and the artists that they help to flourish at Spectrum Laboratories. So really thrilled that we're gonna have them a little bit later on. Amanda, so great to see you. Amanda C, because we have to keep our Amandas straight here. But Amanda C, good morning. So thrilled to have you here. I'm Shannon Penrod. Somebody wrote in over the weekend and said, what's Shannon's last name? Shannon Penrod. I'm Shannon Penrod. And uh, very proud of my last name. And uh, we do the shows here in Los Angeles. I can tell you that we have been doing the shows from home for oof, uh, almost two years. We're, we're coming up on two years here in a couple of weeks. But that's all we're going to be doing is two years because we are waiting to hear. We think we have our permanent digs uh, identified and our plan would be at the latest to start uh, being in the studio in April. So I'm very excited about that because we've got a lot going on here. Uh, if you haven't heard, Autism Live is now a part of the Autism Network and the Autism Network is looking for a new logo. If you go to the website, autismnetwork.com, you'll see that there's this really bland black and white, you know, we just, we wanted to put something as bland, it's a placeholder, as bland as we could put there to, to just be a placeholder because we, we, we're part of a new initiative here that we want to make sure that we're putting any dollars that we have where our mouth is. And where our mouth is, that it's important for individuals on the spectrum to have opportunities to work. And opportunities to work, there's a whole spectrum, you know, uh, ironically, of getting work because you know, when you get your first job, in order to be successful in your first job, you have to have some job experience. It's the reason why we, you know, have internships and things like that. And imagine what it's like for creative people, for artists, and how difficult it is, because a lot of times you can't get hired to do creative work until you've already done creative work. So you have to build your portfolio um, and, you know, which is a type of internship. So we here at Autism Live want to make sure that whenever we have any kind of a job like designing a logo that we are connecting with artists like the opening of the new opening of Autism Live, um, we want to make sure that we're putting our money where our mouth is. So we have a contest right now. It is open to only individuals who identify as being neurodivergent, which you know, is a whole bunch of different things that you, you could be on the spectrum. You could be, you know, um, someone who doesn't have a diagnosis, but, you know, feels strongly that you identify with being on the spectrum. But neurodivergent is a whole lot of other things besides autism. So we're looking for uh, uh, neurodivergent artists who identify that way to submit uh, logo designs for the Autism Network. It's We're only taking the designs until February 1st which as you know, is creeping up on us. And then the winning design uh, will be featured on our website and they will receive a $500 honorarium. So they will get paid and they will have the credit for having designed the Autism Network logo. So we super love that. And um, I know we were working yesterday to get it, uh, the rules up um, in a place where you could just see them. But in the meantime, I don't know if they're there yet. Um, but in the meantime, you can write to us at info at autismnetwork.com. 
and we will shoot you over because you have to get the um, application as well as the rules. So good morning to Amanda with the Blue Hearts. Uh, thrilled that you are here as well. So uh, I just want to remind everybody because it wasn't a long period of time that we have for you to submit designs, but um, but we're, we've already started getting designs and I'm excited to see. And I'm not looking at the designs yet because I'm, I'm going to be one of the judges and I won't know the names of the people who designed them. Um, I will just get to see the designs. So I'm very excited about that. Uh, okay, so uh, let's talk about a couple of different things. We're live right now on Facebook, YouTube, and uh, Twitter, and about 12 other places. Traven probably has been showing you, or he will show you now, all the places where we are live. And you can interact with us. It's easiest to interact if you're on YouTube, Twitter, or Facebook. You just write in on those sites and it appears right here on my screen, like Ka, Amanda, and Amanda. But um, if you're not able to watch us live, if you're watching this recorded, I, I want to remind people you can watch it recorded um, on YouTube. It, it appears almost immediately after the live show. But also, we are a podcast that is available as a free download wherever you get your podcast. In fact, we're the number one rated autism podcast. So, you know, I do love to say that. Renee and Elvira, good morning. So thrilled to have you guys here. So, um, yeah, so find us. But I'm also going to challenge you as we're trying to learn and grow and we're adding new programming and we've got a lot of fun things that are going to be coming to you in 2022. But, you know, one of the things that we've said from the beginning of Time with Autism Live is that we weren't going to spend a lot of time, money and energy on marketing. It's just it's just not where our hearts are at. We believe that if we're doing something here, people will find us. Obviously, you guys have. But we also want to ask you, if you have found something here useful, please share it. And that can be big or small. You can just say to your friend that you have coffee with, hey, here's this resource I think you should know. It's free. Um, it's been helpful to me, whatever. Or you can like us on Facebook. You can subscribe on YouTube and then you, you know, get other perks for that. And we've got some programming that we're going to have. That's just going to be for some, for subscribers, um, for on YouTube. So that's the thing you should do anyway. Good morning, Kimberly. Uh, hello to Arizona, but, um, you know, give us a review on iTunes. Boy, that's a way to help a lot of people find us. When somebody reviews us on iTunes, that means that thousands more people find us. It's such a big deal. I don't understand, but that's how the algorithm works. So whatever you can share with whoever you can, and that helps all of us, to be honest. So, um, and I invite you to do that. You know, we love to tell you, I apologize for my dog. I, we, I'm in a different recording configuration right now because some stuff that we have going on in our family and my dog is just going to bark this whole hour. We've, we've put her up in a big, big room. She's not being tortured. I just want to promise everyone, but she's telling all of you that she's up in a room where she's not normally at. So I, I apologize. Hello from Ontario, Natalie. So thrilled that you're here with us. Uh, Okay. But uh, in any case, we're going to do the jargon of the day here um, in just a second. But I always like to remind all of you, we have lots of experts on the show. I'm not one of them. Uh, you know, I've been covering autism for well over a decade now. So I like to say I have an informed opinion, but I'm not an expert. Please don't mistake me for an expert. I, I love to be here with you because you know what you guys, I always say is that we, we can do this together. We hold hands, we do it together. And when I say us, I'm talking about the entire autism community. And when I'm talking about the entire autism community, I'm talking about individuals who are on the spectrum. Of course, they're the beating heart of our entire existence, right? But, but then I'm, in that, I include absolutely everyone who loves those individuals. That's what I mean when I say the autism community. Um, and I count myself as part of that community because I love lots of people who are on the autism spectrum. The most, obviously, is my fabulous, tremendous, creative, perfect son. Don't tell me my son is anything less than perfect. I'm not listening. Uh, it just isn't true. He's... <laughs> I know. I'm like Beverly Goldberg. Goldberg. No, you know, my son is perfect. Don't talk to me about anything else. Um, but, uh, you know, there were, my son faced a lot of challenges and like all human beings, he still has challenges, but he's doing fabulously because people held my hand. So, you know what I say, reach out, I'll hold your hand. We can do this together. Si se puede, right? 
Okay, we hold hands. We get through it together. Dark Angel says, Canada here. I was lost when my son got, got diagnosed last year in September until I found your channel. And now Calgary Autism is using some of Taka info. Woo! We love Taka too. So uh, Dark Angel, I'm so glad you found us here because there's a community of people here who believe that it's all going to be okay and that your child is okay and you're okay. And there are things you can do to help your child. There are things you can do to help yourself, but it's all going to be okay. So I'm so glad you're here with us. Hugs, right? Okay. We got to get to the jargon of the day because we weren't here on Monday. And so we're going to do double dip jargon of the day. You know, when we do jargon, we take on one word, one phrase, one acronym. We try to figure out what in the hey, nani, nani are those experts talking about? Why do we need to know these things? And my, you know, my motto, if it can save us five minutes and five dollars, let's do it. Right. And I definitely think that learning jargon a little bit at a time can save you time and money. So we didn't do a live show on Monday. That's a long story. That's a whole other Oprah. But <laughs> we're not even talking about that. So we're going to double dip. And it honestly, it makes more sense to do these two together. So I don't know which one is first, Traven. So go ahead, show us which one is first. Hypotonia. You know the drill here, you guys. When we do jargon of the day, first we give you the actual definition. When there's something to be made fun of, we make fun of it. Um, because it's like, you know, you can't figure out the definition from the from the definition. Um, and then we give you a working definition and try to put it into some sort of context where we can start to understand it. We've never done these. We're about to do hypotonia and hypertonia. So let's take a, a look at what hypotonia is. These are brand new. The state of having hypotonic muscle tone. Woo! There's a lot to make fun of there, isn't it? This is the very definition of why we do jargon of the day. Because if you're an enterprising person and you go and you're in a room and somebody says your child has hypotonia, sometimes it does not behoove you to stop them and go, "What on earth is that?" Right? Sometimes you just if there's a fast moving train and you're like taking a note on your phone and I'm like, "I'm going to look this up." How do you spell that? I'm going to look it up later on. And you look it up and you go, "Well." I'm so glad that I took the time to do that, right? Because if you don't know what hypotonia is, then you don't know what a hypotonic muscle tone is, right? Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner here. Okay, let's go on to see our working definition and see if, there, see if there's any help for us. You know, Elio Van Zandt says, help yourself. Um, hypotonia is decreased tension or floppiness in the muscles. So, uh, when we have, sometimes we have kiddos who um, don't have a lot of core strength and we don't want to confuse that with hypotonia, although it can go hand in hand with hypotonia, that we have kids that just don't have enough muscle tone to be able to do the things that we're asking them to do. And this is really important that if your kiddo, kiddo is, is having a lot of trouble doing things that you see other kids their age being able to do to check. Um, because for instance, you know, they, we see a lot of kids who lay down all the time. You try to sit them in the crisscross applesauce and they lay down. And, you know, it's very easy for a teacher to mistake that and go, well, he needs to sit up. He needs to attend. Because that's the thing we're always trying to get to is when you can attend. I hate that phrase. Can they attend? Um, you know, but but the truth of the matter is, is if you're going to learn something, you have to be able to have the facility to focus on the thing that's being taught to you. It might be that you really you want to learn it, but are not in a place where you can you physically can't sit up to learn it. How well are you going to learn it? You're not, right? And often people mistake, you know, hypotonia for someone who just doesn't care and doesn't want to learn. But if we can start to work on hypotonia and help someone to have the core strength to be able to sit up, um, then that's going to help them to be able to attend. If you don't have the ability, if your muscles are not tone enough and you're, and, and sometimes, you know, we have kids that are like spaghetti arms and legs that they just, they don't have the muscle tone. This is not their fault. This is not the parent's fault, but they need some extra support to get that tone in that muscle so that they can. And there's all kinds of things that they can do. And, and again, there's a continuum for this, um, that there are some kids who just have core um, strength issues, and we can work just on that. As I said, that's not 
strictly hypotonia. Hypotonia would be that in, in all areas of the body. Um, but in either case, we're going to work on those muscles and we're going to work on it in a way that's empathetic and aware of the fact that the individual has something going on that's preventing them from learning it in the way that maybe someone else who doesn't have this would. So um, I can tell you that one of the best things that we're aware of to help um, some kiddos, not all kiddos, to work on that core strength is working with horses. That this is where I really recommend equine therapy with a good equine therapist because the kiddo is so motivated. The horses are amazing and they're gentle and they're kind and they sense something in our kids. But I have seen kids who really are struggling and, and, and you know, you try to get them to sit up and they don't want to. Like, what's in it for me, right? But suddenly when you put them with horses and they get to pet the horses and, and groom the horses and whatever and work towards being able to first lay on the horse, but what they really want to do is sit up and ride the horse. So they will work harder on those muscles um, with hypotonia. So that's hypotonia, right? So what's the opposite? Let's head over to hypertonia. Um, so you probably have, uh, you probably can figure it out on your own now that you know what hypotonia is, but let's take a look at what hypertonia is, our work, our actual definition, the condition of exhibiting excessive muscular tone or tension. So it's really just completely the opposite. So, um, and let's go on to our working definition for this increased tension or stiffness in the muscles. So we do see some kids who are just you know, and they, you know, where like maybe their hand is in a fist all the time and, you know, to get them to open their fist, it's a real thing. Now, again, people can mistake this for someone just being rigid. Um, but if it is truly hypertonia, you want to be working with a really good OT, uh, an occupational therapist or, or uh, someone who's a specialist in this because it's not just, a, it's muscular. It's not just what you're feeling and you're feeling tension, it's muscular. So getting to be able to relax their hands or their feet or, you know, whatever muscles. Um, so, you know, absolutely something that you would want to work on with an expert. So hopefully uh, you will uh, start to understand now hypertonia, hypotonia. If your kiddo is having a problem or if you are having a problem with either one of these things, it's really best to talk to an expert. This is not something that you mess around with on your own. Um, you want to be very, this is where we get into, I mean, we're always talking about this empathy for the individual, because sometimes somebody barges in like a fast moving train and goes, well, they need to stop that, right? That's not going to cut it. That's not going to be something that's productive. And you're going to end up traumatizing the individual. You really want to be working with an expert who really gets this. I, Renee and Elvira, I, I love you. They say, because of you, Shannon, I learned how to advocate for my son. Oh, squishy, squishies. I learned so much about autism resources. Can't thank you enough, Autism Live. You guys, you're just just um, off the chart, giving me compliments this morning. You know, I love you all. Uh, and I love being here with you. It's such a privilege to be here with you. But I got to move on to our question of the day because our guests are here and they're waiting. They're on time and they're fabulous. Um, so our question today goes hand in hand with what we've been talking about. What is hard for you physically? We all have things that are hard for us physically. You know, even the the best athlete who has the highest command of their body has something physically that is challenging for them. All you have to do is watch Dancing with the Stars to see that this is true, right? Because we have football players who are great on the football field, but then you put them on Dancing with the Stars and they got two left feet, right? You take a, a swimmer, an Olympic swimmer, and you put them on Dancing with the Stars and they... And it's hilarious, right? I mean, and this is part of, I think, what is the fun of Dancing with the Stars is it's taking people and putting putting them in a different physical circumstance. So no one is perfect at everything physically. We all have challenges. So what do you, what's hard for you physically? I don't have a really good connection, the, the connection that I want to have to my body. Um, so there's a lot of, I'm, I'm a klutz. So there's a lot of things that are hard for me physically, but at least I have a sense of humor about it, right? 
But I think it's important to come from this point of view whenever we're talking about individuals on the spectrum and not and not just carte blanche, first of all, look at something that's difficult for them physically and go, well, that's autism. And so we're not going to work on it or it can't get better because that's malarkey, right? Um, but we also don't want to do the, we don't want to come from the school of thought of, well, suck it up, buttercup, just do it. I don't, I don't, um, there was a, there was a person many years ago that worked at a school that my son was at, that it was an AP. I have to be careful what I say because I don't want to be sued. But, you know, um, I very loudly in an IEP meeting called him a tool. <laughs> and I meant it because he was a tool. He was just an idiot. And I had seen him out on the, you know, out on the quad, an adaptive physical education teacher talking to kids and basically telling them to suck it up. And I, you know, I don't believe, I don't belong, I don't belong to that school. Um, he's a tool. So, and it was terrible because all the people in the IEP, I called them, I was like, you know, you're a tool. And, and I want it written into the IEP that you can't be anywhere near my child. And, um, you know, and there were people who were pulling up their clipboards so that everyone could not see them smiling and laughing because I suspect that many people wanted to tell him he was a tool. There you go. Um, that I'm not advocating for advocating for your child that way, but sometimes, sometimes you got it. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, let's uh, move on to our topic for the week, which we didn't get to announce on Monday. And, uh, and then we're going to get right into our guests. Our topic is such a beautiful one, seeing the whole individual and, and how important that is, that we, we have to stop just categorizing people and putting them into these, you know, and going, well, they're this or they're that. Could we just see the whole person? I loved when we had Thomas McKean on last week and we were talking with him about identity and, uh, I thought what he said was so eloquent that I moved on. And he said afterwards, I had so much more to say about it. So we're going to have to have him back. But I, you know, and he went around the room and said, I am, I am partially all of these things, but I am none of them. There's a sum total of me. And I just thought it was so eloquent. I thought that was the answer, but um, we'll have him back to talk about more of that. But it is so important that we always see the whole individual that we never are just looking at somebody and going, well, you know, it just drives me bonkers when somebody says, oh, well, that's autism. No, no, not ever. I don't know what you're referring to, but no, not ever. Um, I want to see people and I want to understand their experience. And yes, it might be someone who is on the spectrum, which in and of itself implies that, you know, we can't define it. Um, so it's so important that doctors and teachers and therapists and parents and aunts and uncles and everybody else be looking at, you know, everybody that we're talking about that we need to see the whole individual. And that takes time and patience and perspective taking on our part. But I think that it's a worthwhile endeavor. So that's what we're talking about, seeing the whole individual. And Listen, it segues really well into the two guests that we have joining us right now, uh, two amazing young gentlemen who um, founded and created the Spectrum Laboratory, where honestly, I just can't think of another organization that does a better job of seeing the whole individual. They work with artists and they help them to flourish and um, to grow into the artists that they were always meant to be. So we're welcoming Garth Herberg and Jason Weisbrod back to the show. I adore them if you've watched the show before. There they are. Um, and I'm getting a little bit of an echo, and I don't know why, Traven. I'm going to adjust my... Oh, maybe that's on my end. Let me throw on some headphones. Oh, okay. Um, but How's that? That's so much better. It That'd was be you. Uh, <laughs> but leave it to leave it to somebody who understands sound to be able to fix it very quickly. Oh, but yeah. so this good morning, gentlemen. Can I tell you how much I love you? Oh, you love you too. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking earlier, we were looking at both of your headshots, Traven and I, before the show started, and we we just we gotta commend you on your headshots because your headshots both show both of you exactly as you are people who are full of joy and love what you do. Um, so tell our audience for, for somebody who's tuning in for the first time, tell them what you do and what spectrum laboratories is. 
Sure. I'll, I'll, I'll start, G. Um, so we started Spec Labs in 2015, January 2015, with six students and two classes, a film class and a music class. And our goal was to uh, help uh, young adults on the autism spectrum to transition into adulthood and to seek out their passions and their desires in the entertainment industry. So my background is in filmmaking and acting and Gar's background is in music production and composing and played in bands and toured the States and <laughs> did all that fun stuff. And, you know, I got to be in TV shows and movies and we both talked about how we love our passion for filmmaking and music and we wanted to bring it to the autism community. And, uh, and throughout the years with now we have, I don't know, how many classes do we have now, Garth? Maybe 11, 12, 13? Something like I, that. I, I, I stopped I counting. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of classes and we do one-on-one -on -one mentorships and we have classes now in not just film and acting and music, but we have a live band that Garth uh, orchestrates that plays live performances. We have an improv comedy troupe. We have a voice acting team that is blowing our minds with led by Catherine McCauley, our, who is heading our voice acting department, which she's a professional from the business. And, you know, we do all sorts. We do art and design mixed with animation. We did your lovely opening yes. Autism Live uh, intro with the tree. Um, some of our artists, Amos Stillwell and Cooper Berea, uh, put that together. And the music behind it was done by one of our artists, Sean McRae. So we're doing all sorts of amazing work. So Spec Labs is really about um, Spectrum Laboratory. We call it Spec Labs for short. Uh, it's really about finding neurodivergent autistic artists out there. In, it used to be just LA, but now because of Zoom and everything, we're working with artists everywhere. But finding them, what their passions are, and just trying to like link them up with a class or a mentor and really explore how they could one day take their passion and maybe turn it into a freelance or a uh, part-time or even a full-time job in the entertainment industry. Absolutely. You want to add anything to that, Garth? That was great. Yeah. Um, I, I, think in the, I think in the first five years... We just started our seventh year, so it's wow. it's crazy. We have a lot of history yeah. behind us now, but I think the first, uh, I don't know, maybe just, I don't want to put an exact number on it, but the first few years we started, we were focusing a lot on original content and creation with uh, all of our artists. And the last few years, uh, more and more of them have been getting hired. We've been bringing in third parties and clients like yourself, uh, like Autism Live. And um, that's just been really, really rewarding and exciting and is the beginning of a whole new chapter, I feel like, for our nonprofit is we just sort of venture more into the entertainment industry and see more of our, you know, students become working artists. So it's, it's cool. It's, it's uh, what started out is, um, you know, initially, just a couple classes is now kind of becoming more of a, a full fledged production company alongside that whole uh, training and educational branch. Yeah, I super love it. And I think a lot of us um, in, in, you know, there's all these organizations that uh, in, in autism and a, and a lot of them, you know, I mean, a fair amount of them are based in Los Angeles for lots of different reasons. Right. But um, a lot of us were sort of watching you guys grow and watching the kind of work that you guys were doing. And I think everybody has just said, oh, uh, that's something that I want to support. That's something I want to be a part of. That's something I want to foster. Um, you know, I, I love how loved you guys are in the autism community. I see that it's not just Autism Live. I see you guys have a lot of partnerships. I know that th I saw you guys are doing something with Exceptional Minds right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right now we are, right? Yeah. We've, we've done we've done quite a bit with We've done a lot with them. Um, yeah, they, they're uh, one of their creative directors, um, Howie Hoffman, has been a champion of Jason and myself Howie. since even before we started Spec Labs. He's just a wonderful guy yeah. and, and really been in our corner. We've, uh, in partnership with him and Exceptional Minds, we've worked on a lot of stuff uh, for Special Olympics, for Sesame Street. And right now we have a, a gig we're working on for Hospice Federation of America that's all about, um, it's, it features testimonials from autistic people about the grieving process. It's it's a really beautiful uh, film that they've made and we're, we're working on the score for that right now. Amazing. Yeah. I love Howie. Howie. Howie's good people. And talented. Oh my gosh. So talented. So 
I love that. But certainly, you know, you guys are, you guys have done a lot of different partnerships. Let's, since we're talking about projects that you guys are working on right now, um, give us some of your fancy footwork. What are you working on right now besides the thing with Exceptional Minds? Oh, well, Garth, you want to talk about the voiceover gig? The voiceover thing is huge. We got yeah. like, how many, how many of our voiceover artists are actually being paid right now? On yeah, this job? So, so 14 of our voice acting 14. artists yeah. have been hired to work with a company called Speech Kingdom. They're creating um, an application that's going to be used on the phone and, and computer. Uh, that's all about kind of teaching uh, kind of social skills, um, speech skills, but it's very accessible and it's fun. They've created all these like great little avatars. Um, and as you can imagine, you know, doing a phone application that's supposed to be centered around like the user's preferences, you know, like boy or girl, do you want to speak to your mom or dad, you know, pick a friend. There's so many variables. So the project scale is huge. And they came to us uh, for casting and we ended up bringing on, yeah, 14 of our voice actors, our head of VO, uh, Kathy McCauley is directing it. And yeah, it's been amazing. We've been working on that for a couple months and we'll probably be continuing to work on that through the year. And using That's your studio, crazy. right? And they're yeah. using uh, our studio, the Gar studio there to do all the work and recording within. So it's a real in-house, like they came to us and they, they didn't really, you know, they didn't know that they would be using us so much. Like they were just kind of, hey, can we cast maybe a couple of your voice actors? And it seems like they brought the whole project to us. So it's really an amazing thing. That's a well, really we got good a point. I, I should mention for, for anybody out there that's um, interested in working with us, we have kind of a one-stop shop here. So we can handle the whole production process for a lot of different things. Uh, for this particular project, um, everything from, you know, hiring our guys to do the engineering in here to the pre-production, the post-production, so yeah, we've we've kind of expanded a lot, been able to take on um, a lot more than we could before. <laughs> yeah, like uh, I, love it. I know I know you know Lucas Saluski. He's actually being love paid it. as a voiceover actor, but also an engineer. Like he's getting behind not just acting work; he's getting engi actual engineer work, and he's yeah. getting paid to engineer a lot of the sessions. I just studio. love that, you guys. And and if for anybody who's watching, you know, people have companies, and sometimes you just need something. I will tell you that it was like, what, two years ago that we said we kept running into a problem that we were using royalty free music, but we were doing different things. And it was just always a, like, do we have the contract for that? And then YouTube would ding us because even though it was royalty free music or we paid for it, they would still ding us. It was this nightmare. And we said, this is sort of ridiculous. And and my producer, Traven, said, you know, it would be great if we had some signature music that was just ours that we had the rights to and that we could use and it's just ours and nobody else could use it. And so I said, oh, well, let me go to Spec Labs and see if that's something that they could do. And you guys were great because, I, you know, I, I came and I said, I don't really even know what I need. I don't, I, and and you guys asked us questions that I love because you guys sort of massage me into, well, let me ask you this. And what about this? And then how, do you like this or do you like that? It was just the perfect, I didn't have to go anywhere. I didn't have to do anything. I just had to every once in a while ask a question and you guys delivered beautifully and we've been using your stuff and even use it in the, in the opening, um, montage thing. Mm -hmm. And so then of course, when we wanted a new animation, we came to you guys I, and I found that experience to be just the best. Um, oh, great. That, yeah. that as a person who needs work done, I think that a lot of times, even among people who have kids on the spectrum, there's this trepidation of if I'm going to work with people on the spectrum, I'm going to have to give more time. I'm going to have to you know, be my highest self, my most patient self to work with these individuals because they're going to need something extra. And I, I, first of all, I think that's wrong thinking. Um, but I, what I, what I found is that by working with Spectrum Laboratories that I had to literally do less if I had been if I had been working with an artist outside, I know I would have had a much bigger headache because you guys did it so seamlessly for me. And, you know, I, I it was just amazing. I can't say enough good things about what the process was like. So I highly recommend if you have creative work that you please uh, go to Spectrum Laboratories and say, here's what I need. 
Um, I think that you guys are really cost effective too, because you know, you guys ask what's the budget. You're yeah, we work it fit for the budget most, you know, usually most of the time. Like we're willing to like we kind of give you like this is this version and this will be this version, depending on what you yes. kind of have. Yeah. You give choices, mm -hmm. but you're very transparent about it and say this this choice would be X amount of dollars and this choice would be this amount of dollars. I loved it. You guys are amazing. I can't well, say enough good things about it. Thank you. And speaking though, your job, I mean, we had barely any enough. So the whole thing about it takes more time and all that. We had, would you, we had like oh. two weeks, three weeks oh. to give you a new intro. Oh um, my gosh. But no, Amos, it took Amos, less time. Uh, our two artists I put on that Amos and Cooper are amazing. Uh, Amos yeah. Rose and Cooper Perea, they, they really knocked it out. We had a storyboard to you like within a couple of days and then started animating within a week and yeah it was it and was you really delivered fun. early i yeah, i had did. said i said you know here's the deadline and it's crazy and i know if i'd gone to anybody else they would have said lady you're out of your mind and you guys did it and did it collaboratively with input from me where i got it wasn't like you just went okay here's the thing and you're stuck with it i got to say oh can you do this and can you do that there was time so um k fox says since you guys produce music are you guys uh familiar with t this thx thing and i don't know what that is Access, uh, like oh, sound, sound yeah. systems um, thx sound stereo sound maybe yeah. she's maybe she's referring to um, oh, you know what? <laughs> I'm not sure actually exactly what she, that well, is. In the, yeah. in the first thing she says, there's a, it's the beginning of the DVD for, um, Nemo. I think it's that, the, the, the sound logo for TH, THX, oh, that thing that, that happened. Was that like, beginning? uh, that like Glissando George Lucas's thing. thing. Yes. Yeah. That's yes. George Lucas's yeah. sound company. And it that drives really, her kiddo crazy. It makes him. Really overwhelming sound. Oh, it totally yeah. is. Yeah, that's actually George Lucas's sound production company. His first short film he ever created was called THX. Well, can I say, Lucas. can that's I say this? Backstory. But, but can I also say this is another reason to use Spectrum Laboratories because I don't know if you guys remember, but our old opener to Autism Live, which was three minutes long, and it took you on this crazy journey all around the globe. And it, there was all this animation movement, which first of all would make it glitch because it was so much movement. And we sat down to um, talk with the artists. And I don't remember who it was, but one of the artists said, yeah, your opening kind of, it's overwhelming to me. I don't like it. It makes me dizzy. Yeah, that, that was Avis. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I said, oh my gosh, it makes me a little dizzy too. And he was like, I just think, you know, if it's a show about autism, maybe we should be a little bit more sensory friendly. And I... I don't know why I didn't hadn't given myself permission to think like that, but Amos mentioned it and I was like, yes. So, you know, THX, if they had someone who was on the spectrum, they might have said, hey, this might be overwhelming for a lot of people in the audience mm -hmm. um, and drive and make it so that it's not a welcoming, warm space. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway. In any case, uh, you guys have a bunch of classes that are going on right now, and you guys are preparing for a concert. Tell us about that. Yes, yeah, so yeah. we're starting um, our spring semester. Uh, in February 5th is our first Saturday class, right, Garth? That's right. Uh, and then Monday, so that following week, we start during the week. So we're starting. So if you'd like to enroll or get interest, now's the time to do it. Uh, we have uh, – some of our classes are almost full already, like voiceover and stuff. So – um, you know, go to speclabs.org, uh, S P E C L A B S.org, and just check out our list of classes. And we're gearing up for a show that Garth is, uh, it was Garth's vision, so you should definitely talk about that. You yeah. what we're gearing up towards this round, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, I have to say, this is maybe, uh, out of all the semesters we've run our program, the enrollment's been like boom, so there's, there's really not a ton of spots left i'd encourage anybody that's in la that's interested like hop over to our site soon because we're not gonna have much space left um but yeah we're, we're doing a, a concert june 10th at the beautiful uh playa studios venue um big shout out to adam over there who uh was so kind and met with jason and, and myself and basically said hey you know i want to support you guys when you need this awesome space i can't describe how cool the space is uh it's yours. So he's he's handed it over. And um, June 10th, we're going to be doing a concert. And yeah, Jason and Kathy, we're all putting our heads together to try to create just an amazing 
stage show. We want to kind of take things to the next level. All of our artists are ready to perform. They're dying to get on stage. So yeah, yeah, a live so, show. <laughs> a live we show. We haven't had one of those in a while. So it's going to kind yeah. of be like a summer of spec, uh, a very funky, fun type of show where we're going to um, kind of highlight what Spec Labs is through a musical show kind of do a best of spec lab, so to speak, but with a bunch of new, we're not just going to show a bunch of old stuff. It's all going to be new performances and, and new, you know, fun. It's going to be a totally its own show. Um, so is this reminiscent of spec fest of, of old, or is this an entirely different thing? It's, it's going to be a little bit like a spec fest, but there's not going to be much. I don't think there's gonna be a lot of like films or okay. like we may do a film all thing on. later in the year. Like we're trying, so we, we want this to be more of like a music concert is really the fi- the vibe behind it. Yeah. Um, we, because to go that. from the, like the live band on stage, then showing a video, then that's what we used to do at spec fest. And so we're trying to maybe we're thinking about separating, doing like a big music show and then doing like a big film and acting show, mm. maybe like separating them, um, you know, doing, just kind of doing a little bit like that. And so, but we're not really sure yet. We're kind of experimenting okay. with it. It's spectrum laboratory. So it's going to have a very, it's always you know, going to be fun. So that's going to be fun. It's going to be an experimental lab kind of vibe. We're going to just go with what our students really are passionate about and what they want to do and kind of build it from there. And so we haven't really talked much to our students or got their ideas yet. So we're not trying to plan too much. We always I love that, right? really love getting their input and what they want to do. And so there's yeah. going to be a little comedy. There's going to be a lot of great music. And, you know, it's going to be a fun event, a fun Okay, night. so that's on June 10th at the Playa Studios. And we'll we'll have you back on before that to talk more about it as That'd it shapes great. up. And, um, but, we, you know, we've got people, we've got a lot of people online with us from India today. <laughs> I oh. don't, it's just uh, that that kind of day. Hello. And, Hello. Um, and then I'm not sure, Kay, where you are, but... Um, I, if you're not in Los Angeles, you guys, is there a way to participate during this spring? I know for the last two years, you've been doing a lot of stuff online, but are you still doing some stuff online this spring? Uh, yes, we have um, this spring. We're going to, we have a, a, a spec lab social hour on Fridays at 4 PM. That's on zoom. And that's a way to just kind of meet, some spec lab people be a social thing. Eventually we'd love to do it in person, but we're doing that on zoom, you know, go bowling or whatever, but it's a social hour and it's really fun. We do a little music games, do some acting games. It's really fun. We even do a little mindfulness, some deep breathing and, you know, some stretching. And, uh, and then also um, uh, we do mentorships online. So we do one-on-one mentorship. So if someone is, you know, not in Los Angeles and they'd like to be paired up with a spec labs mentor, um, there's a way to get involved. Um, the best thing to do is to just email us, um, through our website, go to speclabs.org, go to the contact and send us a message or email the spectrum laboratory at gmail.com. And we'll try to work something out. You know, we may, if time, we don't have the right mentor or the right fit, but We'll get you involved as much as we can, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, but our classes are going to be in person, most of them, this round. Um, so I think so. <laughs> it's yeah. all well, a day by day. We hope. Yeah. Um, we hope. We hope. Yeah. We also have uh, we have so much really fun stuff online. So for anybody that's outside the area that just wants to, you know, participate in the community, you can check out hundreds of hours of videos we've made, or yeah. you know, over like 140 songs we put out. So there's we a have lot so of, much um, content on our YouTube channel. There's just so much content. So I would definitely recommend. Yeah, that's a great, great Garth. Yeah, like watch that stuff and see if you yeah. like what we do. And then, you know, if, you, if you're if you in, you know, Kansas somewhere, but you really want to make a song and a music video, maybe you come out to L.A. for a couple of weeks and we do a mentorship and you make a music video with us. You know, there's some ways that we can we can figure things out. It's just about, you know, we really try to custom tailor to each specific students needs and their passions and what they want to do and then we just try to see if it's a good fit you know where we can fit yeah. them into our our team we're going to need you to say the email addresses again because they want to take them down and and traven will try to t- try to type them as well if you go slowly so tell us what the emails and contacts are again so the word spectrum laboratory but for some reason our email is the spectrum laboratory at gmail.com okay. um, but like i said you can contact us on our website at speclabs.org and then okay. just go to contact and you'll see there you can contact so us. Spec Labs 
dot org mm -hmm. or the spectrum laboratory at gmail.com. There. Nice, Traven. There's yeah, Tra Traven is much more adept than I am. Uh, there we go. There it is. It's up there for you guys. There so, um, and you can rewind to see if you guys need to. We'll try to stick it in the comments too. But um, because I've watched you guys, you know, our topic this week is seeing the whole individual. And as I said, I think, you know, I don't think anybody does it better than you guys. Because I've watched over the years someone like Lucas Saluski that you guys, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but that Lucas just started taking a class with you guys, but his mother will tell you if you're walking by his mother, she'll go, Oh my gosh, can I tell you how amazing spectrum laboratories has been for my son? And, you know, I saw that all of a sudden, you know, I remember the first time I met Lucas, he said, I want to do, um, I don't know whether he was saying he wanted to do a music CD or at that time, if he said he wanted to do something that had to do with meditation, I blinked and you guys <laughs> had a CD out and he had music videos of him doing um, mindfulness with mm. mixed with music. And he was so over the moon. And anytime that I get to see Lucas, you know, it's just so exciting to say to him, so what are you working on now? And he's always working on something new. And I know his mother has said, you guys have worked just a, a major miracle in his life because you allowed him the space to say, here's what I want to do. Here's what I want to be. And then you laid the groundwork for him to do it. He did it, but you guys showed him how he could. And, and he's just one of many people that you guys have worked with. So uh, I know somebody has written in and said that their child needs mentorship. So do reach out to them because these people are amazing. Um, yeah, Lucas. I mean, Garth helped Lucas put out his first record. He has a full length album, Lucas Lucy, called The Fresh Princess of Friendship. <laughs> that is unbelievable. The album is amazing. We have music videos with Lucas. And before he joined Spec Labs, he just wanted to be a pop star is what he would say. I want to be a pop star. I want to release an album. And we were like, all right. So we were <laughs> yeah. kind of helping him. We help. We we're helping him do that. And it's amazing in our community. He kind of is a pop star. Like there's students who have never come to a class and they come and they go, Oh, that's Lucas. That's the, I love my <laughs> microphone guy, you know? And it's really, <laughs> it's really kind of amazing to see that. Well, and to see him at an event, sitting at a table, selling his CDs. It's yeah. just like, it's a thing that should be, but I think a lot of people would have missed that. Um, and you guys made it possible. You have an incubator in which you help people to make their dreams come true. Um, that's, you know, and you can borrow that to put that as a slug line on your poster. But <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll cop to the quote. Um, but that is what you guys do. And I think that the parents are deeply appreciative but I think the universe should be appreciative because I can't imagine a world in which Lucas Saluski wouldn't have gotten to put out a CD. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's one of the it's one of the steps I think with um, a lot of the artists that come in is you know identifying what they're really passionate about about what they they really want to create and honoring that and trying to support them in achieving that goal. But also, you know, Lucas is a great example of someone who's really blossomed in his own creativity. But we've also continued to support him to try to find real world independence and, and work. And, you know, like ask any artist on the spectrum or not, there's a good chance that they might have a side gig or they might have something else to support their love, their passion. So, you know, we, I think with all of our artists, we try to be very realistic about, you know, yes, pursue your creativity to the fullest extent and we will support you in doing that. But also let's consider other opportunities, other ways you can use these skills you've amassed uh, that could be useful. So, you know, it's not always about you. It's not always about your own creativity. It's about what can you do to provide value and service to, you know, other people in the industry too. You have to kind of have that give and take. Yes. Yeah. Well, and, and, and so all of those things are wonderful and you've helped Lucas to learn things. As you said, he's working as a technician as well, but beyond that, you guys, I still say that, uh, well, I won't say it's the best thing you do because you do so many things that are amazing, but one of the amazing gifts of what you have done is you have created an artist community where these young artists have community. They are accepted in the community. They have friends. 
the when I came to the spec fest, I always talk about this with you guys. You did the one music video where you guys shot the camping thing, and it always makes me cry because it's so evident that they have community. And and it's not just community, it's real community and it's an artist community where they come and they know that their ideas and opinions matter, that their friends have them, that they have a safe place to try whatever they want to try. I, yeah. You can't imagine how valuable that is until your kid is a part of that. And I've seen what you guys do, I, you know, and, and, and just keeping it real it wasn't something that my son was interested in. I think it has to be the right person and the right, you know, I wish that I could have gotten my son um, to do, I, I I tried too late. I wished I'd tried earlier <laughs> when I still had the ability to force him to do things. Um, but so it's maybe not for everyone, but I have watched it work miracles with so many people um, in our community. It's why I just have so much respect for you guys. So oh, thank you. Thanks. And someone else has said, God bless you guys so much for the work that you're doing. Um, so, uh, and somebody just clicked on your YouTube channel and they're blown away. Um, and thank oh. you so much. Um, so I'm sure that they'll reach out to you. Now we're running out of time because I know you okay. guys have classes and things that you have to go to. So I'm just, I, I'm going to be selfish here for a minute. We have a contest going on right now, which I think you uh -huh. guys are aware of that yes. we're looking for a new logo. And I'm imagining, I've sort of heard little grumblings that um, you have some artists who are working on it, that we're going to get some submissions from, from your artists. Is this yeah. I mean, I shared it with our whole the artist community and personally messaged it to a bunch of artists. So I'm hoping they send it in. Uh, I know a lot of them are excited about it and want to. Um, so it's a tight timeline. Yeah. It's a do, we tight know timeline. A, do we know when it's, when it's due by? Is there it's due, due by date? February 1st. Oh, okay. I'll do it. Cause we have to pick the winner by Valentine's day. So, um, so we're, we're really looking forward to some great. Now, there are times uh, when we have come directly to Spec Labs for artist work, and there are going to be times when we do that again in the future. But we also, the reason why we didn't just come to Spec Labs and say, you know, you guys do it is because we also wanted to open it up to everyone oh, yeah. in the world. Um, so, you know, but we are looking forward to submissions from Spec Lab artists. So I'm glad that you guys are on it and taking care of that. Oh, yeah. um, you should you should get some if you I'm sure you probably have maybe hopefully you've got some already but um, I get some more. I I'm trying to stay out of receiving them so that oh, okay. when when I see them it's blind we're gonna put them all up on the wall and I won't know who the artists are so oh, there'll be cool. no chance yeah. that I could that I'm like well I love Lucas Saluski I want to pick <laughs> his I won't know. I won't have any idea who's. Uh, I'm pretty sure we've had a couple artists send some in, but I'll I'll do another uh, reminder. Yes. Yeah. Well, because the deadline is soon, yeah. and and it isn't a whole lot of time. And I will say that one of the things in the rules um, says that it has to be a vector image, and and what we are running into is that we have artists that that is not something that they know how to do. So we are mm -hmm. willing to take artwork and figure out how to vector it later. Um, so I will say that's that. something you could, I mean, Amos, I bet knows how to do that. So if you yeah. need to do that, get, come to us if, whenever you need okay. to get that done and we can <laughs> okay. help you with that. Of course you guys can help us with that. Um, we were just trying to make it easier, but then, uh, I think what, un unfortunately it's going to end up discriminating against some artists who just aren't at the point where they know how to do that, who would maybe like to learn how to do that, but don't have the facility to be able to do that. We don't want to leave them out of it. That's actually so, a good point. We, we're, we're, we're starting, eventually we are going to do an art and design program. Where we're going to teach a bunch of artists, just stuff, just like that, like Photoshop yeah. and how to do all that because for jobs just like this. So a big yep. thank you to you because what you did there and what you've been doing with us has inspired us to kind of see where the work is kind of needed and where we, yep. like what our students, the kind of work they can get jobs doing. And so we're going to continue to work on all that stuff within our organization as too, as far as getting more attainable work for our artists. Yeah. Um, and just, this is a perfect example of a job just that's just perfect for that. So. Well, and this is exactly where we're trying to come from is that if, you know, we know that we're going to need a lot of things over the next couple of years. And when we started talking about it, it was like, well, we just, we just have to put our money where our mouth is. 
And, um, and we thank you guys for helping to facilitate um, because there are times when regardless of whether it's people on the spectrum or not, you know, sometimes you just want to work with a clearinghouse that's going to, and I don't mean to make that, that sounded wrong, but someone who's just going to facilitate it for you. And, and that's what you guys do. And it's really remarkable. So I, again, want, we just want to go over the places that you want to go to. You want to go to speclabs.org yes. or you can email the spectrum laboratory at gmail.com for more information. If you're in the LA area, what's the youngest student that you guys take? Uh, I think our youngest has been eight. Okay. But we usually, but that's, that's young. Uh, we just had a 10 year old in our short film production class. Um, but our, our, I'd say our average age is 18, 18, okay. 19 is kind of like the average group. Yeah. But we do work with younger students. We have a lot of 15, 14, 15, 16 year olds too. But I think our average student is somewhere between that, I don't know, 17 to 24 kind of is usually around because a, a lot of our stuff is about that transition from out of high school into college into adulthood and work and, you know, finding their, you know, um, <clears throat> their passion in life and how we could yeah. possibly turn into a job. But also we do have some classes that are great for beginners. Uh, yeah. We don't like just say, Hey, this is, this is all about getting you a job. It's not, it's also about, you know, starting young um, and getting them interested in the arts and seeing where their, you know, passion may lead to and, and well, then, exactly, so, yeah. which is my next question, because if people go to your website, they're going to see a vast array of classes. And if they're not sure, like, oh, I don't know what to, whether to put them in this class or the other, I've seen that it all sort of shakes down and that you guys, if they put them in one class, you guys meet that individual. And then by the next time, they're they're 100% in the class where they, they groove. But is there a class that you recommend for the first one? Um, I think improv acting is really fun for like any age, um, unless they're, uh, and it, it depends on their level of communication and like, right. you know, uh, if they're very socially awkward and don't like being outward, you know, like if they're very introverted, I, maybe not the best class where something like a short film or writing okay. production, writing short films might be, but then on the music side, I mean, there's a recording workshop this round, it's a little bit more guard towards this show but we usually can find you know the best thing is to just reach out to us and we can like do a consultation and yeah. like kind of figure out where where the fit okay. you know if i could if i could add on to that yeah, so yeah. I, I think that uh some of our classes have a very low barrier to entry um in in general we really like to see uh students that ha they have a clear passion or interest we're not really interested in sort of like a just babysitting your kid like we, we really want to bring in students that have a strong interest. They don't even necessarily need to be, have a lot of experience, but it's clear that there's something they want to do. Okay. Um, and I would say with the voice acting class, yeah, voice uh, acting it's a very low, those. very low barrier to entry because yeah. it's, as long as you're comfortable using your voice. Um, and yeah, I think, I think with uh, the acting class with improv acting um, the same, you know, if you're comfortable using your voice, there's a lower barrier to entry. I think, um, some classes are a little more specialized, but some of the the online classes are great too. Like the mindfulness class, I feel like is very open, okay. uh, and I think the social hour is also very open. That we're excited to start doing on Fridays um, in February. I so there's there's definitely options. It's just kind of a, a a sliding scale as far as like you know the challenge that needs to be met. But but just hit us up if you're interested. You know, contact us. We are still a small nonprofit, so everybody that comes through our doors. We get to know them. We get to know what they need and where they're at. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Amazing. I got to let you guys go. Garth has All something right. he has to go to. Goodbye, Garth. I love you guys <laughs> so much. Um, we're going to be back tomorrow. Go ahead and go, you guys, because I know okay. I promised you 11. Uh, All right, much really, love, Shannon. Mwah, much love to you, too. Uh, we're going to be back tomorrow. Great show tomorrow. We've got for Let's Talk Autism with Shannon and Nancy, of course. We have uh, a gentleman who is on the and identifies as being neurodiverse on the spectrum. We'll ask him what words he uses, uh, who is an Elvis impersonator. And I don't think we've ever had that before. So I'm really excited about that. And we've got amazing mom, Marsha E. 
Weasley were doing a lot of these autism family portraits right now and just dropping in with a mom or a mom and a dad and, and hearing their story of uh, autism in their life. When, you know, when their kids were diagnosed, what it was like, what they're like now, just so that you guys can see the arc of what happens to families. So that's all tomorrow plus in the news. We'll be back then. Until then, give your kid as a hug from me and one for you too. Thanks for watching you guys. Bye-bye for now. If you found anything helpful in this video, please give us a like. In fact, make sure that you smash that subscribe button on YouTube and give us a like on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Instagram for important updates. And please download our free podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you so much. See you next time.